Our next speaker is Martin Percy, who is the Dean of Christ Church Oxford um, College and Cathedral. Martin is a Church of England priest and academic, and he's been Dean of Christ Church College since October 2014. Uh, Martin teaches in the Faculty of Theology and Religion and is a fellow of the Said uh, Business School, um, University of Oxford. In this lecture, he will explore examples in the present and draw on past practices to shed some light on how the practice of community development, supported and enriched by churches and faith communities, might be challenged and transformed in contemporary society. Uh, welcome, Martin. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's very good to uh, be with you, and uh, thank you very much to uh, Liz for her introduction, and also particularly for Lucy as well in her uh, opening remarks uh, in relation to uh, loneliness. Um, you've got the excitement of a PowerPoint presentation. I have to say, I don't trust myself with any technology, so I'm delighted with uh, Anita here, who's actually going to uh, uh, work the magic stuff and that kind of thing. But we'll go through at a reasonably uh, cracking pace, really. Uh, but I'm around most of the day, so very happy to uh, natter and take questions. So without further ado, let's go on with the first thing. Now, this is uh, an interesting uh, story for us all, really. And it relates to... Um, uh, a professor of psychology at the University of Leuven almost 100 years ago, who had a student who was studying celebrations, particularly church ones. And uh, the student wanted to know what children made of celebrations. So her supervisor said, well, why don't you take a poll of 100 children and see what they think is the ideal kind of celebration? So, there we are. It's a birthday. That's what a child thinks a celebration might be. Next one. And uh, this student drew three pictures. And these are not original, by the way, uh, just so you know. Uh, the first one was uh, a picture of uh, a child with quite a lot of presents, a uh, decent birthday cake, and as you can see, uh, just a parent and one sibling. Second picture. Um, Quite well, a lot of people, really. And as you can clearly see here, uh, birthday cake, no presents uh, to speak of, but just lots of people gathered. And the third one, as you can see there, uh, we're back with that, really. Uh, so what this child, uh, or what these children did, was they looked at these three pictures, one with uh, lots of presents, but almost nobody, one with a big present, and a parent, and one with lots of people gathered, but no presents for the child. And 70% of the children polled said they thought that the picture of the celebration, the party, was the best <laughs> way of celebrating a birthday. In other words, it wasn't about them, it wasn't about presents, it wasn't about acquisition. So there's that picture. Young and old, uh, lots of food, gathered around a table. Uh, really interesting. So one of the interesting things about uh, faiths of all kinds is you can divide them in lots of different ways, but one of the ways to divide them is are they faiths that gather people or are they faiths that just get people to come on their own and go on their own? question I sometimes set for students is to ask them, what is the common denominator between the Roman persecution of Christians, early Christians, Jews, and Zoroastrians? I don't think one of the Zoroastrians here today. And the answer is, they were all gathering faiths. They brought people together because they combated loneliness in their society. They drew people together. The very early church actually majored on widows and orphans and gathered them together. And for a considerable period of early Roman history and early Christian history, people found these gatherings 
before these families gatherings to be subversive things <coughs> politically. Because why were all these people coming together, particularly to talk about a kingdom that was to come and different dynamics about love and a different way of being and living? You may recognize this. This is not um, uh, from uh, Brexit. Um, <laughs> this is actually from uh, 1940. And it's uh, post on Kirk. It's a powerful image, isn't it? There's different kinds of loneliness. And this is um, a British Tommy uh, shaking his fist at the rest of Europe alone. The rest of Europe. Now, I've included this uh, image here because um, you may recognise um, this as being a sort of rather distinctive sort of uh, block of flats. But the reason it's up here is because uh, this was all eventually just flattened and decimated. One of those uh, great experiments in the 60s and 70s with living, that we saw from that uh, video a moment ago, what does it mean to dwell? What does it mean to live? What does community look like? And for early modernists, post-war, housing were just shelves, boxes, mechanistic, places in which you inhabited. And in fact, the point made in this rather interesting book here is that when you put people away like that, uh, away from their common spaces and their communal spaces, and you lock people down into individualism, they do indeed become lonely and isolated, and they trash the common spaces. This turned out to be an extremely alienating way of living. It was not, I have to say, what the architects intended, not a bit of it. But it is a really interesting example of what some people call obliquity, the law of unintended consequences. Here's uh, just a few books um, that uh, teach us a little bit about uh, loneliness and isolation. Uh, this is possibly one of the most famous in the last 20 years by a man called Robert Putnam, a uh, sociologist called uh, Bowling Alone. And it's about the decline of suburban American gatherings. Powerful image on the front cover there of uh, just one person in a bowling alley. And uh, Putnam, uh, I mean, it's a really interesting book, but one of the things Putnam does in this book is he mourns the loss of informal, soft social community gatherings, holy nights, round table, independent order of foresters, Freemasons, all sorts of things like this. And that's been replaced by shopping, consumerism, and television. The electronic heart, he calls it, uh, glowing in the sitting room. And of course, now, since the 1950s, everybody has one of these on their iPhone, on their laptop, or of course on their iPad. Even watching television now is no longer a family gathering. It's something that individuals can do whenever they want. I'm afraid I'm of that age where uh, I simply don't understand this. Some people explain to me I can watch TV programs before they're broadcast. I find this incomprehensible, but apparently it can. So Putnam says uh, one of the things that we're losing in society is the art of gathering. The consequence of that is loneliness and isolation. The consequence of that is enormous damage to social policy and to the health of individuals. Here's the next thing he talks about. He's gone into uh, the next generation. Millennials talks about our kids. You've got a again, powerful image here of um, an empty park. For example, people don't play in parks anymore, they see them as places of danger. Um, potentially, if there's any play there, it's supervised very, very heavily. But of course, plays become something that people do inside in the uh, comfort of their own home. Now, there is some good news in all of this, uh, and that is that um, in terms of social movements, uh, I could point to a couple of things um, in uh, the USA, uh, which really uh, buck the trend, and also um, one interesting example in this country. Let's deal with the example in this country, first of all. Um, how many in the room have ever been a Cub Scout Brownie guide 
or the like. Oh, quite a lot of you. Okay, so you remember the point of being a Cub Scout, Brownie, or Guide. The point was, every Thursday night or whatever night you met, uh, was to do some ritualistic things together, and at some stage in your short career in that uniformed organisation, somebody would deposit you in a wood um, with possibly a torch that didn't work very well. Um, you would get lost, it would be wet, you would be cold, uh, but it would end, usually late, with uh, burning marshmallows on an open fire, and your parents would pick you up. Cub Scouts, Brownies, Guides, of course, deteriorated in membership about 30 years ago. Lots of them just packed up. In actual fact, the reason for that, of course, was our kids, Upland's subject, were in their rooms, just watching TV, doing Nintendo, playing video games, and chatting to their friends, but not actually meeting them. And it took almost the reflex of parents to realise that this wasn't really a very good idea, because actually, if your kids spend a long time in their bedrooms, they tend to go rather pale and pacey, and become rather antisocial. There is an inherent good in getting them out into a wood, losing them, making sure that they get wet, and at least giving them a taste of burnt marshmallows. So gathering is a good thing. 